Hey folks, Near Mint Nerd here on the I Got Issues Network, uh, back with my second live show ever. Um, started off with a um, new comic day haul. We're going to keep the ball rolling today. Again, part of this is a little bit testy, um, just trying to figure out a few things. Um, so today we're going to do a back issue haul. I got ugh, boxes and boxes, all these boxes here. Uh, filled with like stuff I bought in the past couple of months that I can't wait to show you guys. Uh, it's going to be amazing. We got a theme today. Um, I kind of went through all the stuff I bought and I looked for all like uh, the classic kind of pinup covers that um, uh, look pretty cool and you know beautiful women. Um, kind of inspired by this comic uh, I just bought um, recently, the first issue of Betty Page. Um, which is really cool. It's a, uh, you know, taking the idea of Betty Page um, and putting her into like the role of a little bit of an Indiana Jones type uh, within uh, kind of the context of that world. I think that's a pretty good idea. Um, I really dug this first issue. A lot of fun. And so it inspired me to kind of put together a haul of, um, of you know, a lot of the covers that I consider to be, uh, you know, just kind of that pinup style. And of course, Betty Page, queen of the pinups, right? Uh, like, as far back as World War II, you would, you know, it was all about having little Betty Pages painted on the planes. Um, and uh, kind of this haul is inspired by that. So uh, I'm going to just kind of uh, get off my ugly mug here and show you some of my favorite covers that I bought um, inspired by that style. So we'll uh, flip over here to my cover central, we'll call it. I'm gonna, I'm still getting used to the new framing on this. I don't know, I think this is sort of framed now. Um, I hope so. Just put that there for one little minute. Um, and uh, as I kind of just get my covers ready here to go, I'm also checking um, a few other things here. Um, I'm, I'm kind of testing out this format because uh, as I've mentioned before, I think I'm gonna be live more often than, than I'm not from now on. So what I'm doing now is I'm kind of going to my live hall um, on the computer and I'm just going to see if I can uh, sort of stream it at the same time as, uh, as I do a few other things here. Uh, so bear with me while I just kind of uh, get the hang of this a little bit. Anyway, so on top of that first Betty page, I also picked up issue two. Um, really beautiful uh, Lisner cover. You gotta love that. Um, you gotta love it. I mean, it's just gorgeous. This series is just gonna be beautiful for covers. I know it. I can't wait for the inevitable. Um, you know, I'm sure there's gonna be um, an Adam Hughes cover, a Greg Horn cover. I'm sure all these guys are gonna be represented um, as we go here. Just a, a gorgeous, gorgeous cover. Um, what else here? Uh, I got lots of stuff. Sorry, I'm just also, at the same time I'm doing this, I'm a little distracted because I'm testing out something on the side here. Um, and don't worry, I know not a lot of people are going to watch um, as, I, as I do this. Um, most people, because I'm not going to put out a warning. I never know when I'm just going to start shooting a video. I, I have limited time. So I know most of you will watch this second run, you know, later tonight, tomorrow, uh, five years from now, whenever. Um, hey, Edward, good to see you. Yeah, that Fathom cupboard is, uh, is amazing, isn't it? Um, I don't know how much you can see because I have no idea what my framing is. But uh, yeah, gorgeous Michael Turner cover. Um, so I just showed you this uh, Linzer cover from Betty Page. Let me show you another Linzer cover from a few years ago, Lady Rawhide. Um, absolutely beautiful cover. Just love this cover. Lady Rawhide from Dynamite. Isn't that nice? Just beautiful. Linzer's just a terrific artist. They actually did a lot of really great, I think Adam Hughes has a really nice Lady Rawhide cover as well. Um, okay, so next up, another new, uh, another new comic that just came out, I think, maybe two weeks ago. Um, another beautiful pin-up cover is um, Sheena, Queen of the Jungle number one. This, of course, is a J. Scott Campbell cover, and a beautiful one at that. 
Absolutely love this cover. Just simple and classic. Everything you want a pinup cover to be. Um, yeah, I, there's people who will consider this cheesecake or exploitative. But, you know, it's, it's just... I mean, you can't really get around that in comics. Um, and, you know, it's... As long as it's not, like, you know, super cheesecake, like, as long as there's some artistic value behind it, um, I'm, I'm okay I'm okay with that for the most part. Um, sometimes they do go too far, and I have a couple of examples that I consider to be a little too far, uh, certainly. But um, I do like this one a lot. Let me just take these down. So, um, just uh, to reiterate why I'm doing this in the live format from now on. I just, I have found myself in a little bit of a pickle in a time crunch. And I just don't have time to do the editing and the transferring and the running around required to do the show that I normally do. So this allows me, even though I don't imagine many of you will watch this live because like I, I keep saying over and over, um, I, it's not gonna be scheduled. So uh, at least at first. So you just kind of hope you stumble on it but really, you're going to watch it later. I know that. Um, okay, so next up is another J. Scott Campbell pinup cover that I really quite dig. It's Gen 13, number 5. I've always just dug this cover. Um, I should mention that most of these books, a couple of the newer ones I paid cover for, um, certainly the um, Betty Pages I paid cover for, most of these, though, were found in dollar bins. Um, I found a couple of nice dollar holes recently, and... Uh, they have been paying off um, big time. I have a great time digging around. Um, this is one of the treasures I found there uh, recently, and that was a dollar. Great bargain. I actually uh, used to collect Gen 13. I actually have read most of it, but um, you know, my collection, which you can hear, I'll uh, switch you around here just for a second, which you can see this is just a, short, a small part of it. This is all unprocessed, like none of it's alphabetical. Most of it's just thrown in boxes. You know, I have over a hundred boxes. Um, I'd move the camera to show you, but I just uh, don't want to um, reframe it because I have no idea, you know, um, how well this is framed or whether it's framed at all. Hey, everybody. Um, okay, flipping you back around, show you some more of these beautiful covers. Uh, one more. Oh, I, I got a Michael Turner here I wanted to show you. I mean, you, you see this one a lot in haul videos. Um, it's like the proportions on this are outrageous. This is not one of my favorites. I think uh, I think Power Girl looks pretty ridiculous, actually. But Black Canary and um, uh, who's who's the other guy? Is that Ice? I don't know. Who's that in the background there? Uh, Black Canary and whoever that other young lady is. Um, you know, they're it's they're a little better proportion. But Power Girl, come on. This is kind of an example of what I don't love um, about pinup covers. Just a little bit uh, going in the wrong direction there. However, here's another uh, Michael Turner that uh, I actually do really like a lot. Um, very classic. Um, you can see it's computer rendered. Uh, this is Tomb Raider Endgame number one. Love the flames behind her. Love the kind of computer feel about it. Just a terrific cover. And we got the new Tomb Raider movie coming out too. So that's... Uh, that's, uh, looking forward to that for sure. Um, I got another beautiful cover here. This is Heroes for Hire number four. Absolutely love this cover. Just gorgeous. This is, uh, Tucci. Um, what can you say about this cover? It's, it's just perfect. Look at that. It's just absolutely stunning. Um, four beautiful superhero ladies. God, I'm just like in stunned silence, even as I admire it. Just a beautiful, beautiful cover. Heroes for Hire number four. What else do we got here? We got, uh, I always like, I'm not even sure who the cover artist is on this, but uh, I always loved this cover. Um, Madame Mirage number one. Paul Dini and uh, Kenneth Rockefort. Is it, is this a Rockefort cover? I'm not sure. It's from Top Cow. It is absolutely stunning. Just kind of a beautiful cover. Well done. I love how the smoke from the gun is framing her as if she's sitting on a hoop. You know, like, just absolutely terrific. 
So again, for anyone just joining us, um, today's theme is pinup, pinup covers. Um, and these are all various comics that I bought. Uh, they say don't judge a book by its cover, but these ones I specifically did just that. Picked them up in dollar bins just because I thought they had amazing covers. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of Greg Horn covers here. Greg Horn's a guy, beautiful artist, but maybe kind of goes the wrong way sometimes. I'm going to show you two co two covers here. This one I quite like. I think this is just a beautiful cover. Emma Frost number two. Um, really, really like this cover a lot. Um, I love the colors. I love, um, you know, I love the... Um, I love that she's got a like a cupid bow and arrow. Um, I love that her proportions aren't so out of control. It's just a really nice classic pinup cover. And then I'm going to show you this one that I think is um, just a little bit exploitative. And this is the very next issue, Emma Frost number three. You can see it suddenly takes, you know, this the beauty of this and just kind of pushes it maybe a little too far with the, you know, the bee swollen lips. Um, a, just a little bit outrageous proportioning. And uh, look at that. Although look at that face, look at those lips. It, it's uh, she was looking right into your soul, but that's a little bit uh, much for me. Um, and then one more uh, Greg Horn here. Um, from probably around 2001. It's Marvel number one of six. The ill-fated Bill Jamaz title that was kind of a comedy book. Um, yeah, very unfunny and not very well put together. However, a uh, beautiful cover. I really do like this cover. This is like, it's got foil embossed and, uh, and uh, quite, a, quite a beautiful pinup cover. Quite nice, actually. like that a lot. I like the DCC cab. That's kind of funny. Um, then we have um, New Mutants number three. This is Josh Middleton cover. Absolutely stunning uh, magic. Just beautiful. Uh, that is absolutely fantastic. Just love this cover. And I have all the New Mutants covers in my personal collection that were kind of followed suit on this. I think he did all the solo um, women of the title in this style. This is the only one I've found in the wild recently, but, uh, and man, is it ever stunning. Look at those blue eyes. Just a beautiful, um, almost has a watercolor kind of feel. Um, just, just gorgeous. Love that. <laughs> Edward, you agree. Um, what else do we have here? I also have a Cho cover. Um, I don't have, I have a lot of Cho in my personal collection. Again, I'm just showing you covers that I bought recently. This actually I bought off the stand probably um, sometime during the summer. Just thought this was a phenomenal Cho cover. You know, his Harley Quinn covers are, are like, um, are uh, touch and go with me. Some of them, like this one, just outstanding. Just love that cover. Look at that. And I love the radio. Na 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 Batman. Unbelievably gorgeous cover. But, you know, he's also done a few covers that are less than gorgeous or less than appealing uh, recently. So this is uh, definitely good show. There's good show and bad show. And that, my friends, is definitely good show. Man, Mike Mayhew, here is a pinup cover that I absolutely love. Just absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, Vampirilla is no stranger to pinup covers. Let's face it. Um, you know, if you are doing a Vampirilla cover and it is not gorgeous, you know, you've made a terrible mistake. Um, but this one is absolutely stunning, and I love that she's kicking ass and taking names. Uh, just a strong, bold woman. And look at that. Just absolutely stunning. Very impressive. Love this cover. One of my all-time favorite covers right here. Man. Um, here's another strong, bold woman um, that is a little bit more familiar. It is uh, Buffy. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Always love this cover from, uh, I think this is, um, yeah, season eight, number one. Uh, just absolutely dig this cover. 
Um, a lot of nice Buffy covers, but this one, just the simplicity of this pinup, this, uh, you know, she's carrying the ax on her shoulder, the casualness, um, just absolutely stunning. And I like that, you know, doesn't even really look like Michelle, Sarah Michelle Geller, does it? Puts his own spin on it, and it is absolutely beautiful. Love it. Love that cover. Um, who else has some favorite covers out there? I bet, uh, I bet you guys have all kinds of uh, ones that you love. Here's a Granov cover. Um, you'll know this young lady as, um, of course, Mary Jane Watson. Uh, just absolutely adore this cover. Love the perspective. Love the way she's kind of leaning back on the scooter. Look at those long legs. Uh, kind of a forced perspective. Um, man, that is just beautiful. Back against webs. Oh, just dig it. Love how her shirt is almost like a, the cocoon of a spider, the way it's uh, colored and designed. Uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that image. That is a beautiful, beautiful pinup cover. Really dig that one. Um, here's one. I didn't actually look up who did this cover, uh, but I almost am certain that it's Greg Land. Just kind of, you know, you start to recognize cover artists' um, styles, and this feels like Greg Land to me. I could be wrong, um, but it sure looks like uh, it sure looks like his style. Just love it. Uh, Marlo Zinc, I have uh, like the zombie issues of this. And I have a couple of other issues, but this one I saw in the wild. I had to pick it up. Just an outstanding cover. Just beautiful pinup cover. Um, the Faux Magazine, uh, which we're going to see a little bit more of real soon here as I work my way through my pile of beautiful covers. Um, here's another one from 2000's Tomb Raider number 6. It's a Joe Jusco. And uh, is it Jusco or Jusco? Huh. I wonder. Um, but I do love this cover. Look at that. I love... Uh, you know, it's, I don't think I've ever seen a bad image of Laura Croft, but uh, this is uh, absolutely stunning. Another bold, strong, muscle-bound, beautiful, tough, kick-ass woman. And that's what we like to see in our superhero covers. Just absolutely gorgeous. There she is. Um, this is from Grim Fairy Tales Volume 2, number 1. Really dig this uh, Snow White. Uh, just a beautiful, lovely co cover image. I don't know who the cover artist is. I didn't look it up. Um, but uh, I thought this was, you know, stunningly beautiful. There's a lot of covers in Grim Fairy Tales Volume 1 that I find to be a little too much leaning towards the cheesecake side. But this is, uh, this seems like just like a classic, nice, um, beautiful... Uh, pin up to me and there's a difference. I, I know like you guys are probably a lot of you are like what are you talking about? It's just like, you know, it's just half-naked women. It's uh, But you know, there's an artistic quality. There's a difference. There's a difference between a pin up and just exploit exploitative uh, cheesecake. I feel like um, this one is by um, the Dodson's absolutely beautiful uh, I don't, you know, I don't think I've even read this comic. I just saw this red one, and you know, uh, Terry Dodson, you can find gorgeous Terry Dodson covers all day long. This is just one of many. Um, I also love the um, Black Cat Spider Man covers from the from the miniseries, the Kevin Smith miniseries. I picked this one up just because I I, I was intrigued by the cover and uh, hadn't heard about this one. Um, so um, I can't, I'm not even sure when this is from, but. $2.99 cover price leads me to believe it's at least 10 years old. Looking forward to reading that. Uh, what else do we have here? Red Sonia number nine. Um, Gail Simone's Red Sonia title. I love this. Uh, Jenny Frizen is getting a lot of attention now. She's doing a lot of the Wonder Woman covers. Um, but this is an absolutely beautiful cover. Red Sonia. I'm a big Red Sonia fan. Um, uh, and this is, uh, and how could I not be with covers like this out there? Just beautiful. Um, love, again, the soft watercolor feel. Um, love the, you know, on the side of the cliff with the water below her. Just stunning. Um, you know, and that uh, knife in her hand, just, and that look in her eye just gives her, 
you know, a little bit of deadly intent. And uh, it's uh, just absolutely, absolutely beautiful. All right, I mentioned the magazine covers. This goes back again to the uh, Bill Jamaz and um, Joe Quesada days of 2000, 2001, when they were doing all kinds of weird stuff. Um, I'll put this up while I talk about this. Um, uh, Nerd versus Fat. Yes, the Red Sonia run is gorgeous. Um, I, I found this one for a dollar um, in my little hidey hole. And uh, I'm so glad I did. I found all these actually for a dollar. This batch too. Um, let's see. So, yeah. So, Bill Jamaz had some ideas about what he wanted on covers. He always felt that he didn't want to see word bubbles and he didn't want to see superhero battles. He wanted to see iconic images. And what that created for the most part was like a, um, you know, an era of really boring covers. Um, you know, I remember a string of 12 Spider-Man covers where it was like Spider-Man webbing above the city by himself and like going, these issues are completely interchangeable. You know, I don't even know which one's which. Like, how boring. Um, although we did get a couple of classic things out of that. And uh, this was one. He wanted to make Thunderbolts more like a magazine format. Um, the covers, that is. Inside, he changed the he changed Thunderbolts from a team of villains to a team of, um, like, uh, MMA-style supervillain fighters. Uh, it didn't work at all, of course. Um, but it was a short-lived thing. And these covers are actually pretty beautiful. Um, I'm just going to show you the, the bunch of them. They're all by different artists, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure. And I don't even know who all those artists are. Um, so I'm just kind of going to blow through them here and just show you. Um, back when Thunderbolts, um, they were trying, it was like Maxim Magazine Thunderbolts. Um, just, I love this one. Isn't that absolutely terrific? Just a gorgeous cover. Really dig these covers. There we go. <laughs> Love this one too. Um, this was one of the characters, this guy here, um, who was one of the MMA style uh, fighters in this superhero fighting ring. He was kind of the star of the book. Um, he hasn't been seen since um, because it was not very well received. I actually didn't mind it. I gotta be honest. Armadillo played a big part of it, uh, the Captain America villain. I uh, really liked him. Uh, and then finally this who... Um, I guess I thought it was MJ for a long time, but that doesn't make any sense. Um, I guess probably just the Spider-Man on his shirt made me think that. Uh, but just a beautiful cover. Gorgeous stuff. All right, so let's move on to um, my last two cover art guys that I'm going to show you. You know, they're kind of the hottest thing right now. Um, and for good reason. Uh, starting with uh, Mr. Art Germ himself. Um, I picked this up uh, recently, you know, for cover price. I also got number 12, uh, but I couldn't find it when I was putting this little thing together. Um, but you get the idea. Beautiful Supergirl cover. Um, he's got a really interesting eye and a really interesting, um, you know, art style. Uh, just a touch of anime. Um, you know, uh, great proportionist. Not too, like... Out of control. Here's another one that he did uh, a, a while back. Uh, Batgirl number 12. Absolutely gorgeous cover. Just love this cover. Again, picked up all these books for a buck. So uh, pretty happy about that. I think Art Germ, I think right now, most of his books are not commanding um, a lot of money. But uh, slowly they're inching up there as people grow aware of kind of uh, the, the stuff he does. Um, here's one that I found that I've seen on a lot of videos. And I just can't believe I found it in the dollar bin. Um, absolutely. Just love, love this cover. Uh, this is uh, Xenoscope's Oz number one uh, art germ cover. Uh, just absolutely gorgeous. This is the variant cover. Isn't that just unbelievably beautiful uh, image of uh, Dorothy before the uh, tornado in her farm gear with her gloves on. Uh, you see the witch in the background. Just 
absolutely beautiful art. Um, here's another one just from the Oz, uh, you know, the Oz connection. This is uh, number four, another variant cover. Um, obviously, this is the uh, Wicked Witch, and there's Dorothy uh, in her in her sights, so to speak, in her crystal. Um, I thought this was outstanding as well. Just beautiful, beautiful cover. And then we're going to get to perhaps the most famous of all uh, pinup artists these days. Um, I'm sure you can guess who that is. You know, you know what I don't didn't find. You know what I don't have. I don't have any Brian Boland. Um, I should have went through the Wonder Woman stuff because his run on Wonder Woman. Oh, so many beautiful, wonderful covers. That guy is an absolutely underrated um, cover artist. It's uh, probably because. He hasn't done as much recently. He's kind of slowed down. But man, Brian Bolden, Boland is um, one of the all-time greats. But the last uh, bunch that I'm going to show you here today are uh, Adam Hughes, of course. Um, these are ones that I found in the wild recently. Uh, Voodoo, number two. Um, I'm not sure about this one. This isn't one of my favorite ones. Uh, it seems like it's a little bit much. Um... Probably could have pulled back a little. There's something, you know, it, it becomes unattractive if, if you know, you, you go too far. Like, there's just something about this picture that I don't actually love. Um, but it's always a joy to see a new um, Adam Hughes that I hadn't seen before. Here's a classic that I found for a buck. You don't find this in the wild for a buck very often. Just absolutely adore this cover. I love, you know... Classic. Well, look at the expression on her face as she kind of sees this uh, um, this poster, a photo of uh, her uh, old self here. And this, oh man, that's a, just such an unbelievable. He his his expressions are so awesome. And why wouldn't they be? Because you know, there was a time when you know the best expressionist in all of comics. I think we can probably all agree is Kevin Maguire. Kevin Maguire on uh, Justice League International unbelievable expressions would come across his character spaces. And Adam Hughes is the artist who replaced him eventually and emulated his style in such a way that nobody even knew that uh, Kevin McGuire was gone because he did such a fantastic job. So Adam Hughes, um, you know, knows how to do those expressions just as well as Kevin McGuire. If you look back at some of those, uh, uh, some of those old uh, covers from Justice League International, um, you'll be shocked to discover that they're Adam Hughes and not Kevin McGuire. Um, here's another Adam Hughes, beautiful Wonder Woman. Again, found this for a dollar in the back issue bin. Just a, a gorgeous, classic, beautiful cover. Absolutely wonderful. Um, love this cover. Uh, Adam Hughes did several issues of Fairest, but uh, only, a, only a couple are really um, stunning. Uh, this one amongst them. Just absolutely love this cover. Just beautiful, beautiful. Love the way, the perspective of her reflection and her writing her name in the glass and from her, um, from her breath. Oh, just absolutely stunning. Uh, and then finally, uh, a couple of Adam Hughes from the run that he's most famous for, I believe, and that's his Catwoman run. Um, all these I found recently for, um, you know, but under $5. I think I paid maybe three, four dollars each for these. Um, absolutely love this cover. Love it against the jet, the jet red. Uh, so beautiful. Also picked up uh, this, you know, picture framed. I love that the way he's held the frame in such a way that, you know, it's kind of covering one eye. Most artists, I think, would have had her hold that frame in a way that made her look like she was centered in the frame. To put this kind of perspective on it, is uh is actually pretty amazing just uh just gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and then perhaps the most famous i'm going to say the most famous uh cover maybe in the last maybe in the last 25 years i'm probably wrong that's a big bold statement but this is a big bold cover and that is catwoman number 51. this is such a stunning piece of art and this is one of the few covers um, that has transcended kind of the speculation market. Um, even in like, uh, I think last year's um, Overstreet Price Guide, it was still like $4. 
This year, I think it's jumped to seventy dollars in the Overstreet Guide, uh, which is about what it sells for um, now uh, in the wild. But my, uh, not in the wild, in in um, in the uh, online markets. But my God, worth every penny. Um, I paid four dollars for it. Uh, and uh, I already own one, but I could not leave. The, I will never leave this there for four dollars ever in a million years. I wouldn't leave it there for twenty dollars. This is just one of the great pieces of art, um, greatest greatest covers there ever was, in my opinion. Um, all right, guys. So I think that's uh, that's about it. I'm gonna flip back around here. Ew. So that's uh, my pinup haul. Um, Again, inspired by Betty Page's new, um, I love that Betty Page now has an ongoing um, uh, from, is it IDW? Can I remember? Let me see. Do, 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 Dynamite, yes, Dynamite Comics. Um, and uh, really great. Hey, hi everybody. Uh, who else joined us? Hey, there's Kyle again. Uh, what time is it this time? <laughs> Well, I'm just wrapping up, Kyle. Unfortunately, you got here a little late, um, but you can watch it after. Um, a lot of great covers, a lot of great stuff. Guys, hope you like this format. I know I like I have you know verbal diarrhea and I talk and talk and talk, and you probably just turn off the volume and look at the beautiful covers. I understand, I get it, I would do it myself. 7 a.m. My god, man. Um, the last time you were here was like 5.30. Do you ever sleep? What is going on over there in New Zealand? All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me again. I'm going to keep going with these hauls. The next haul I'm going to do is probably next Wednesday. Um, I'll be back around this time. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it consistently around 2. I know most, so a lot of you are working and you can't check in, but this is when I have a break and I can get this done. Uh, um, so I'm going to keep going uh, with a new haul next Wednesday. My next themed haul will be Star Comics. That was an offshoot of Marvel Comics. Um, they did a lot of great titles. They did a lot of Saturday morning style titles like Mad Balls and, uh, and The Popples and uh, Top Dog and, and uh, Heathcliff. But they also did um, uh, the Ewoks titles. Um, which uh, was made at the company I, I used to work for when I was um, younger called Nelvana here in Toronto. Um, they also did the Droids cartoon um, as a comic and uh, they did a Chuck Norris Saturday morning thing and I've got like, I've got a, and they, I think they did Muppet Babies as well. Anyway, Star Comics, it was kind of, they described it as a, a line that was meant to be uh, the age appropriate right before you would get to the Marvel superhero comics. So they weren't for real young kids. They're kind of like an intermediate Saturday morning cartoon level of, uh, of comic book, you know, for I guess what you would call the tween market. Um, it lasted a few years. Uh, it was from the mid 80s. You know, the first comic I ever bought at a local comic shop, and this is a true story, first comic I ever bought was Ewoks number six. And I still remember I paid 60 cents for it. Um, and the reason I bought it is because the other comics I were interested in were 75 cents to a dollar. And I wanted to spend less money. And I loved the Ewoks cartoon at the time. And I loved Star Wars. I was crazy about it. So I bought that Ewoks comic. First comic. I mean, I had owned a lot of comics before then. Don't get me wrong. But it was the first one I bought. Actually paid money for at a local comic shop in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Um, I had to take the bus there. So I was just at that age. Probably... Well, it was probably 85-ish, so I would have been um, maybe 12. Um, so, you know, just started had just started taking the bus downtown. All our shops, we only had a few. They were downtown. We had to take a bus. I lived in the, in the outskirts of Winnipeg. Um, anyways, that was my last little boring story. I'm going to see you guys next time. Thanks so much for checking in. Good to see you all. Um, I'm sort of finally getting the hang of how this uh, live stuff works. Uh, so the show should get better and better, or maybe worse and worse. I don't know. I can't predict the future. But uh, I want to thank you guys for joining me, and uh, I'm going to see you again. Bye-bye.